Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I came across a really interesting study. Uh, I saw it through Dr. Schoenfeld, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, and I think it's something that we really need to look at. And the reason I want to cover it is because historically we've been hearing for a long time in the fitness community that HIT cardio, which is high intensity interval training, can add muscle mass. And because it adds muscle mass, maybe not as much as resistance training does, but because it adds muscle mass, it can help with body composition more. And it's become a really big fad. And you guys know that I'm not a fan of HIIT cardio very often or something that people should be doing multiple times a week. That's a whole nother topic, which I can cover again later if need be. But I'm not a fan of it. I generally recommend more of a moderate to low intensity cardio for most people who don't need sports specific conditioning for something that they're doing specifically. Now, this study is interesting because it gives us some explanations for why Previously, people have thought that it adds muscle mass because we get better techniques involved, more money involved. They can do DEXA scans, things like that. And what we found is that in sedentary obese men, now these are the people who lose fat easiest and gain muscle easiest because of where their starting point is, it is very, very easy to take sedentary men and put muscle mass on them really quickly uh, with minimal training. And it is also easy to take weight off of them. So they put them on this HIT cardio routine for being sedentary. All of them lost body weight and they seem to gain muscle size from the studies and this is where it gets interesting but what ended up happening is that they seem to gain muscle size in their legs from doing this cardio because it trained the transient storage factors they all saw something like a 14 percent i think it was either 11 or 14 percent increase in glycogen storage in their legs because so again if you're going to do any sort of activity you've got to have a fuel source and so it trained their leg muscles to hold more glucose if you hold more glucose, you hold more water. So the muscle can swell up. I mean, weight training does the same thing to some extent, depending on what sort of rep ranges you use. So they got that, but they, and they appeared to gain muscle size, but the reality is they didn't gain muscle size. It's just water. And sometimes when you dry out or diet, what a lot of people need to remember, those transient storage factors re-disappear again until you feed back up. So they're really just temporary and they can go away really, really fast. And they can also be replicated just by weight training. So it seemed to make the muscles grow, but when they studied the actual tissue proteins, they lost muscle mass. They lost actual tissue proteins and saw atrophy in the muscle tissue. And that's interesting because this is a case to where we actually are seeing as a result of, of some sort of exercise that the majority of the test subjects lost a little bit of muscle mass in their legs from doing the activity. Well, that's undesirable. I think most guys who are trying to get bigger, sure, they don't mind a little extra glucose and water in the muscles, but they want the muscle tissue, the muscle fibers to actually grow because that's far more permanent. That is a real change. It's going to make that muscle stronger. It's going to make it thicker, bigger all around. Now, ideally, you'd like to get both. But in this case, this form of activity, which can impede recovery in various ways, only shifted the fluid balance, made the muscles hold a little more water while the actual muscle tissue was reduced and lost. And again, I don't think any of you out there are actually trying to do a form of exercise that causes you to lose actual muscle tissue. I think for most people out there training, that is the exact opposite of what they're trying to achieve. So I think it's really interesting that we have a study showing these two conflicting things. So we get an explanation why they thought maybe just from measurements that they saw some increase in size from this activity, but the reality is it's just water. It's temporary water storage and they're actually losing muscle. The full mechanisms of why they're losing muscle on it, I couldn't really tell you. I'm not sure, but it's interesting nonetheless. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.